Greetings, goblins, ghouls, and all that's in between. I'm Brooke Palmieri. Welcome to Audible's Halloween special, A History of Horror. Horror fiction has changed dramatically over the centuries, and audiences have too. What people found scary in the 18th century might seem pretty tame today. Or contemporary audiences might react to the classics with fresh fear the author might never have imagined. Let's talk about some of the defining moments in the history of horror. I can't think of a more iconic, groundbreaking, vastly influential work of horror fiction than Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. There are many things to fear here. That your obsessions will destroy you. That the people you love most will be taken away from you. That you'll never live down your regrets. Or if you're like me, you relate more to the monster and fear being alone forever. But try to cast your mind back to 1818. Can you imagine what would have been the most terrifying aspect of reading Frankenstein when it was first published? Back then, it was the dominant belief that scientific experiments on human corpses was a sin, a heresy, and that mutilating bodies ensured that their souls would never find salvation in the afterlife. So, the most horrifying thing about Victor Frankenstein's experiments were that they condemned not only his own soul to eternal damnation, but all the other innocent people he dug up from their graves without asking in order to patch together his monster. Medical experiments were still being used to scare audiences seven decades later with Arthur Mackin's The Great God Pan, first published in 1894. It begins with a man named Clark witnessing a dangerous operation performed by his friend, Dr. Raymond, in which the doctor bores a hole into the skull of his patient Mary in order to force her to encounter the ancient Greek god of sex and madness, Pan. Clark goes on to document unimaginable consequences of the procedure. Mental breakdowns and disappearances in a small English village, rumors of strange orgies in America, gruesome murders and suicides, all centered around a woman named Helen. The book horrified critics when it was first published. Its decadent portrayal of pagan beliefs and rampant sexuality in a femme fatale was considered a threat to the reading public. Helen's evil influence on characters, regardless of age and gender, caused a moral panic. And yet, Oscar Wilde loved it. It was a big influence on the cosmic horror of H.P. Lovecraft, and Stephen King considers it one of the greatest horror stories of all time. The author Shirley Jackson was a master of depicting the horror of human brutality. Just read her short story, The Lottery. But it's actually her last novel that I'm most obsessed with, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, published in 1962. In describing the torturously regimented day-to-day -day life of an isolated family that's experienced a terrible tragedy, it's the story of magic and superstition, alienation and small town pettiness, and more than anything, fear of change. In all of Shirley Jackson's writings, but especially in this book, horror as a genre is transformed. Rather than a vast moral, philosophical, and spiritual concerns of writers like Shelley and Mackin, whose protagonists experience exceptional, unexplainable events, Jackson hones in on something much more terrifying to modern readers. Everyday interactions between neighbors, friends, and family. And speaking of transforming horror, no overview of the genre's defining moments could leave out Stephen King. Stephen King does both the small town terrors and expansive supernatural horror we've talked about, but he adds something else, gore. Take Pet Cemetery, for instance, published in 1983, where King takes very realistic fears, the difficulty of moving to a new town and making friends, the death of a pet, the death of a family member, or just plain old death, and mixes them with elements of supernatural horror, ancient indigenous burial grounds that curse the white people who use them, zombies, and 
The kind of violence that will keep you awake at night. Nowadays, what was once hinted at or described in very few words can be drawn out in excruciating and exquisite detail. And there is oh so much bloodshed to depict throughout human experience. Not only that, who gets to tell horror stories or have their horror depicted is always changing. Vampire lore exists all over the world. Every culture has its charismatic blood-sucking parasites of one kind or another, and endless permutations of the vampire legend exist in horror fiction, from Varney the Vampire of 1845 to Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire published in 1976. If, like me, you find the constraints of immortality both thrilling and chilling, you might enjoy diving into The Gilda Stories by Jewel Gomez, a cult classic of queer vampire fiction published in 1991. Gomez combines gothic tropes with the horrors of real-life historic events. The title character Gilda escapes enslavement on a plantation in the 1850s, only to be initiated into eternal life by sex workers in the brothel where she gets a job. Gomez takes the real horrors of being poor, black, and queer in the South and filters them through an epic kind of bloodlust, spiced with a little voodoo magic. And like all great works of horror, the stories of Gilda's travels and travails innovate other genres as well historic fiction, romance, and science fiction through an Afrofuturist lens. But the scariest part of the stories remains the fact that the most fearsome monsters are mortal men, and the most unimaginable horrors are true historic events. Because sometimes, more frightening than the dark is what the world looks like with the lights on. Happy Halloween.